Greg, did you enlist or were you drafted? Drafted. Drafted? Yep. Well, tell us a little bit about the year and that experience. Uh, uh, I was going to college, yet have your nine credit hours to stay out of the draft. <laughs> Just, uh, I wanted to accomplish something also, but uh, that, you know, it was a little bit of a pressure to make sure your hours were up and you were had passing grades and all that. And, uh, things got a little complicated, hard for me. I kind of, I dropped out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that kind of took a job and then uh, pretty soon I get this letter in the mail uh, for going to get my physical. That was the two-week warning. <laughs> that okay. you couldn't get your job. I was never in the lottery. This was uh, middle of April, 1968. Okay. The lottery hadn't come out yet. Right. Okay. No numbers yet come okay. out yet. So I get this letter to go get a physical. I was lived in Akron, Ohio. He went up to Cleveland, Ohio for the uh, physical at that point. So we go through that. I guess I passed. And so uh, then I, in between that time, I thought, well, maybe I'll check with the Navy. Four years, I think, I, I don't want to. Four yeah. years. I'm you know, married. I have a good job. I have plans. <laughs> you know, I was already, yeah, I was already married. Uh, so that would have upset the wife that I'd be gone twice as long as I had to be. <laughs> How long were you, had you been married at that time? Uh, we were married in July of '67. Okay. I got my draft just before, actually, right around my birthday of April 24th, middle of April. Uh, so I just turned 21. Wow. Uh, I got my draft notice. I, uh, Give up on the Navy. I thought, well, I'll go in the Army. I'm pretty smart. Surely they won't put me in the infantry. I can get a good job. <laughs> and so I risked it. Little did you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't know the circumstances of draftees were pretty much first on the line. For, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I uh, went, went into the service. Uh, showed up uh, May the 8th with my date. I had to show up at uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky. That was basic training. Through that, that's two months, basically two months of that, and then uh, I had uh, orders to go to Fort Polk, Louisiana, for AIT okay. infantry training. And I knew that. I didn't know where I was going, other than you know where in the infantry. But anyway, but I like I had to get my 30 days leave. I got 19 days. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah. They always owed me 11 days, but I never never <laughs> received it. You never you never went knocking and asking. <laughs> never got compensation for. <laughs> So uh, anyway, said our goodbyes and uh, you know uh, flew off uh, to California to Oakland and uh, they stayed there two or three days. There's a time frame so sure. how long I was there. This big building, you're in great big floor of a bunch of steel bunk beds. <laughs> uh, you could come and go for a while. And then they Almost like freedom. Stay there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we went into town for something. But anyway. And then we uh, got on an airline, uh, it was Flying Tiger Airlines hmm. at the time. I guess it was a commercial plane, but we must have stopped. But flew through Alaska. We had uh, hydraulic problems, so we were delayed a few hours in Alaska. And they fixed it. We took off, got to the end of the continent. They said we're having hydraulic problems again. We need to dump all our fuel and try to get back to the airport. So, wow, wow, <laughs> wow, you know, started sad. off great. <laughs> yeah, started great. It would avoid in Vietnam. Anyway, we got back to the airport. Uh, they, oh, it was a whole day layover, so they put us up in the Hotel Anchorage. Uh, it happened to be a really nice bar at the top. There you <laughs> go. A lot of us <laughs> frequented. <laughs> Some didn't even leave, but uh, I so. drank what I could. Was, and, uh, was it a whole plane load of guys, or was it like yeah, 10, 20? Yeah, okay, the whole plane, plane okay. was uh, Vietnam veterans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, nobody else was on that. Okay. Uh, finally got a good plane, headed out, landed in uh, Yokota, Japan, I believe, for a short period of time. I don't think we got off the plane. Okay. And then on into uh, Benoit, Long Ben, something like that. Yeah, Benoit. Yeah, Benoit. Yeah. Stepped off the plane. It was somewhere. It was hot. The sun was yeah. out, and I could feel the heat hit me in the face when I got off the plane. You know, those days you walk down the steps and into the terminal, and don't remember much about that other than uh, there was a. You know, you're looking at these guys that are going home. They're pretty scraggly and <laughs> war torn. One guy had two M16s with him. He was taken home. Oh really? Now, I don't know if he got on the plane or not, but he was in the terminal. <laughs> two, two automatic weapons. Uh, I don't think that was. I don't think he made it. But anyway. So 
Do you remember any of your impressions or thoughts at that time? Yeah, I was thinking, ha, ah, well, I was in awe of these guys, probably wishing I was them going yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do remember memories every so often of what I was thinking at the time. I just, that's, that's kind of, I guess that's normal, I don't know. But, yeah. yeah. I had a lot of time to think when you're just hopping through the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thinking about what's important, what's not. Yeah. Uh, so, let see, then we... Uh, I remember riding in a Jeep. No, 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 no. We went for uh, uh, the five days of P training. P training? It was additional training. Okay. Uh, besides what we got in Fort Polk uh, for infantry training. It was uh, more more personal intensive uh, booby trap training. Okay. Uh, we learned about uh, wires that could be above at your head. You always think of they're at your knees or something, but they could be other places that you kind of be aware of. Uh, pudgy pits. Uh, they had us low crawling through this area with large puddles here and there. Well, as we were low crawling, they would throw these quarter pound sticks of dynamite in these water puddles next to us to descend, I don't know, to get us get prepared for, it, yeah. for a, a shocking loud bang or something. And uh, that's all I remember about that. But I remember, okay, now time to get your weapons. I'm assuming there'd be a really nice armory there with brand new rifles, all clean, maybe oil or ready for you. It was a pile of rusty M16s on the ground that they probably dug up somewhere and just threw over here. And I don't know how long they've been sitting there, but they were just as rusty as could be. I, I, can't, I can't believe this. You're going to have a. <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah, are you serious? Pick, a, pick yeah. one, take it apart, clean it. I hope it works for you. It, was a, it never failed me, though. You had it the whole time? Yeah, yeah. I had it the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So there, uh, I think I stood guard over uh, Route 1A okay. one or two nights, mm -hmm. watching the mopeds and bicycles going underneath me. <laughs> and then we uh, went, went out, got out of Jeep. It was me and another guy that happened to be from my hometown. Oh, wow. I didn't go through basic or IIT with him, but he was from my hometown. Not the same high school we went to, but he was from Akron. So that, that's kind of a coincidence, connected. yeah. yeah. In the dark, we arrived at this hut someplace, and uh, they assigned us that we were going to uh, Charlie Company, third of the 187, 100 first airborne. And but that, well, you told me the date. It was like by that time, it was probably that October 18th. You told me about yeah, when you went north because yeah. there was no patrol or anything. I was just like waiting, and then at that time, then we all flew north to uh, that Camp Eagle. I think we went out of patrols from there because I thought that was going to be our base. It turned out that we returned to Camp Evans whenever we went back. So, so just to clarify, you got there probably in Vietnam early eight, uh, October? Yeah. Probably? Okay. October 5th was the official okay. time. Now, I don't know if that started when I left California, right. <laughs> Japan, or I actually got in country. It was that, close to that time period. Okay. So if somewhere happened, a couple of weeks happened in there before they flew north. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when you got to Camp Evans, they were really just kind of settling in. Yeah. Well, or, Camp or Eagle. moving in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I said I. I think we went out. I uh, to my company from there because I. I thought, like I say, I thought in my mind that that Camp Eagle would be our base. Your base. Yeah. I don't know how long it was. <laughs> I think I took a picture of the sign that showed the hundred first and stuff. At Camp Eagle. Yeah. Anyway, so I was with Charlie Company from uh, October through uh, April 15th. And who was your first company commander? Captain James Bond. <laughs> yeah. Another <Okay>. alarming <laughs> thought in my head because I always, I loved watching James Bond. So I thought, oh great, this guy's gung-ho. We're in trouble. <laughs> He's going to be looking for trouble or give us a hard time. Yeah. You know? But I, I don't even know if I actually met him or not. You know, you don't meet the captain usually. You platoon leader and squad leaders and stuff like that. So, uh, Do you remember who your first platoon leader was? Well, uh, it was Lieutenant Bresnahan. Okay. It was the lieutenant. Uh, Sergeant Perez, uh, he was uh, from Guam. I don't know how many stripes he had on but he'd been in forever. <laughs> you know, kind of a hardcore oh, yeah. army yeah. guy, very strict. He wouldn't give you any slack. And then we, one time we were complaining. We had no reason to complain. We weren't in combat or anything yet. Just the environment of 
humping 90 pounds on your back and living in a jungle, not getting, you know, just all that stuff. He says, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be complaining at all. Just wait if something happens. Yeah. You're going to remember that she was, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just that. wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, do you recall when you guys headed up to the, the mountains, up at, into um, Rocket Ridge area? Do you recall that at all? Uh, yeah, like April, middle of April, end of April? Um, well, when you guys went from Camp Evans up into like Long and Rockasson and oh, those, yeah, late, I, I, late 68. I don't remember those dates. Okay. Okay. Being I wasn't in charge, I really didn't know where I was half okay. the time or what I asked. <laughs> it didn't matter. I knew I was somewhere. In the lowland, maybe west of uh, the coast, west somewhere west or southwest of Camp Evans, uh, and we moved. Right. I remember Long. We on Long quite a while. Said so we can do a lot of construction, mm -hmm. and, uh, preparing things. You know, going on patrols around there. Have a few uh, uh, minute mad minutes. You know, just in case the enemy was there. Maybe it got foggy and they weren't sure. Okay. Not wondering where the uh, observer or the listening post was. Hopefully, we didn't shoot at them. Yeah, <laughs> that was always true. a fear yeah. when you went out. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you recall how often you guys went out on patrol in those those early days that you were there? Or, yeah, because uh, uh, I feel like I was always walking point. Okay. That's me and uh, David Bandelier. We were a fire team leader, or he was a fire team leader. And it seemed like it was mostly him and me. I'm sure other people did, but it felt like that most of the time. I know there was a. Other guys, of course, uh, Rivera, Walk Point, and uh, Poe Longley. He walked Point a lot too. Uh, mainly because if you had an M16, you'd never really walk Point if you had an M79 or the M60 machine gun, uh, or if you were an officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, that happens. Well, leader. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, and. Uh, Bandelier, me, and uh, Robert Abbott, who's the guy I came in with, uh, we're pretty, pretty close buddies, and we know oh, Abbott walked away too, so we made, made good friends. They called us the Three Horsemen because we was either carried the heaviest packs or we were fast. Sometimes we walked too fast for the, the rest the of the group. The other guys, yeah. So, yeah. Tell us to slow down. Yeah. You're probably smarter. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time, we, they always wanted to stay on trails. They always want to make time to get somewhere, so uh, make sure we try to get to some kind of knob or NDP for the night yeah. where we could secure it. Uh, most of the time we did get there before dark. One time we didn't. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell us about that. In the dark, which is pretty much pitch black. Uh, I remember one night, uh, Sergeant Perez, he had the glowing, everybody had like a luminous dial on mm -hmm. their watch, most mm -hmm. of us did. For night guard, but uh, I remember he was he was kind of guiding us into place. I don't know how he could see, but we were watched following this little dial. Okay, we follow. Him. Pretty soon I don't see it. I run into a tree. <laughs> just, you know, just stuff like that just seems funny nowadays. But uh, yeah, it was never good to get there after dark. I mean, because you had to build your whole. You weren't even sure home. you had an NDP. I don't think at that point. But uh, yeah, so get there. Charlie Company, a lot of, I hate to say this almost, but they, they weren't great on digging in every night. Maybe we were a little bit lax, I don't know, or because there was no contact. We yeah. weren't worried about it, but usually we'd just uh, uh, put our claymores out every night and uh, run it out there to the edge, try to put it far enough or way or down a hill or the other side of a tree so it didn't hit you. <laughs> run our wire back and sometime we put get some old uh, banana leaves or it was huge elephant ears, we called them, laying down, and then we'd get our, not always use our poncho, but we used our poncho liner all the time. Okay. Yeah. Came in handy, huh? Small miracle. So I don't know how, because we go to bed wet every night, either from rain or from sweat. And I'd cover up with that, it would just suck all that. I'd be dry in the morning. Mm. Just, just a miracle. So I, I have one to this day, just in case, you know. Yeah. Uh, any, anything significant? Um, you want to talk about any uh, firefights or any people from Charlie Company that you uh, Well, our uh, Lieutenant Duggar was our uh, platoon leader at the time. Oh, because I'm still in Charlie Company yeah. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still in Charlie Company. 
midnight, uh, December 31st, sniper shot him. Now, the, what I heard that he was standing on top of an ant mound, well, the ant mounds could be as high as the ceiling. Right. Sometimes the ants are maybe that big. <laughs> yeah, no, they, yeah. they weren't worried about them. I mean, they never bit like a fire ant or something like that. But I, I suppose he was standing up on top of an ant mound and a map in one hand, a compass in the other. I'm sure a trail watcher or a sniper saw him and, and killed him. Yeah. And so that was my first experience with him. So we died. Yeah. Uh, next one was basically, it, it had basically not much contact at all. It was mostly patrolling. Precautions, putting out our claymores at night, NDPs, uh, you know, the usual getting some water. We always had water. We were in the mountains. Yeah. Beautiful mountains, you know, heading for the war. It was beautiful mountains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clear mountain streams, almost blue and cold coming down, so we'd fill our canteens. Really never even worried about putting, you know, bacteria, so we never hardly put the alizone tablets in the canteens. If it was murky and laying somewhere, maybe we did, but not that. Uh, so, but then uh, the next incident really was uh, uh, February 26th, I guess, when Rivera was killed. We were on patrol, I think it was headed toward Leech Island, I hear. And uh, well, before that, it was uh, uh, who's going to walk point? Whose turn is it? Nobody really spoke up. <laughs> <laughs> Told you about uh, shoot, what was his name? Anyway, he's felt guilty to this day that he didn't speak up. He thought it was his turn. Yeah. yeah. Rivera said, "Oh hell, that I'll take it." So he, he got it. He's a guy that would carry cross bandoliers on his chest like this. You know, he, Hispanic guy. He's from El Paso. Uh, real good humor. He liked the Beatles. He was back in the rear. He would sing Beatles too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he awesome. must have had him. He had drum set when he was home or something. I can't remember now, but he was, he was a fun guy. Anyway, uh, walking down, following a stream, really, you know, it wasn't too deep, but it was the clearing. It was like a trail. Well, a stream pretty soon. I, he saw a trail going off the left. Well, as soon as he stepped onto the trail, he got shot. Okay. Uh, trail watcher, I guess, with AK-47 for five or six rounds in his chest. Yeah. Medic was, uh, you know, working on him. Yeah. And uh, a two later. Perez calls me up to the front to help him. Well, I'm like five guys back at that point. I was behind a nice rock. That's his big. Calls me forward. Okay, I took my pack off, set it down, and went forward with my weapon. And one guy was laying face down in the stream, so I intended to hit. This is uh, Alfred. Uh, I said, You okay? Go ahead, I'm fine. <laughs> just just playing possum, yeah, you know, not getting up. And then, then in front of him was Rivera, and the medic was there, and I was trying to help the medic. I think the medic had kind of realized he was dead, but I kept going. Yeah, your friend. Yeah. I kept trying to, you know, the sucky chest wound, plastic on the front, and it was just, it was too going. But I was talking to him. Yeah. Well, some guys ran off to chase whoever was shooting him. Sometimes it's a trap when you chase a guy right. running that, but uh, they, they didn't get into a trap. They chased him and they saw maybe a blood trail. You know, they're shooting and didn't find him. He was probably already in a hole someplace that we didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, just, they had a lot of tr caves and traps and, and things that we didn't. We were so naive thinking we were about to by ourselves, maybe we'll see one. but. I'm sure they were always watching us and listening their, to our radio for yeah. sure. They had their escape routes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, eventually, got a chopper in. Well, it was a triple canopy jungle and no place to land, so he had to lower a basket down through the trees. and We got him secured on there and saw him go up. You know. yeah. uh, one thing we're not happy about is the, uh, they'd never tell us what happened to our buddies. Yeah. I was just going to ask the, the you know, finality. We knew of he it. was dead. Yeah. Well, yeah, we pretty, well, pretty positive he was yeah. dead. I mean, uh, that many shots. Uh, but uh, it's almost like you have to shut that out. It's like, it's, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, or they want to delay the mission by having a memorial ceremony or anything, or uh, I don't know why they would tell us. I mean, not everybody was killed that was taken off. Right. You know? 
one night we had we had a, uh, a hippie in our outfit. <laughs> These were guys that drank that smoked pot, you know. Uh, he was uh, he was smoking pot because none of us did. I don't give you that impression. The guys in the rear might have, but there was always a impression we were drug smoking, baby killing yeah. soldiers. Yeah. So. Yeah. I lived through that for thirty years. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, he must have been smoking something. Well, he just sat down. We were on patrol. He just sat down on the trail. And said, "I don't think I want to go with you guys. <laughs> you better go with us. We're going to leave you behind. You're going to be out here all by yourself, defend for yourself. You know. All right. Get up, go." One night we're on NDP. Uh, he leaves the perimeter, doesn't tell anybody. So he comes back into the perimeter, gets shot. M16, right there, one hole there and one hole there in the yeah. chest. Well, he, he get him out, chop him out, go back to the rear, didn't hear about him. He did, we figured he's dead. They, they told you if you're shot in the chest in M16, you're, you're in any road truck or you're dead. Well. Yeah. That's not true. He went back for a stand down. There he is walking around. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. With a, it looked like two belly buttons right there. I yeah. Mean, dead center. So it wasn't, <laughs> so, even, it wasn't even a wound to get him shipped home, huh? Uh, well, I don't remember. He was in the rear, so okay. I don't know okay. what happened to him after that. He didn't rejoin our group in okay. the field anymore. You can't trust him, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Anyway, then uh, one day I get uh, taken back to the rear, just me, for a medical exam. Uh, some doctors are examining me all over. I keep asking why he wouldn't talk to me about it. And so it's like the very next day, the, our outfit comes in the first stand down. The captain calls me in. I can't remember what his name is, Gerard, Captain Gerard. I can, so, I can look try, it up, but yeah. Look it up, but yeah. I'm John a Blank on, on that. Anyway, he chews me out, up and down, one side and down. You know, Perez is sitting right there, who wouldn't defend me, that, that I was a good soldier, I did things, you know. Well, before this, I had, uh, we'd had a river, I'm sorry to jump backwards, I was it's trying right, to do something right, chronological right. order if possible. No worries. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, probably one of my best days, uh, I felt, was that we had a river crossing. And just click you know, you know, thousand by thousand meters, and we'd have to patrol the whole area while every so often we'd have to cross the river to get to the other side. This was the Songbo River, uh, pretty wide. I think it was 200 feet wide. Okay. Pretty fast moving, brown churning water. Uh, you'd have one good swimmer tie a rope to his chest. 300, we had all had some kind of rope that we carried, so they put them together and had about 300 feet of us. He swam across, by that time he was down there, so he walked back up and tied it to a tree, we tied this, and so we would then get our packs out. And some people had air mattresses, not usually, because they were pretty loud at nighttime, but that was kind of a luxury. I don't know where they came from, but <laughs> somebody had them, maybe the cap. So four or five at a time, we'd, we'd go across, you know, our rifles on our shoulders, our packs on top of the air mats if possible, and going across overhand like that. Of course, they were pulling security on this side for sure. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> we're we got across. <clears throat> so we're working our way across. This one uh, uh, black guy, it was important that I tell you he was black. <laughs> he was, uh, he was, uh, he had, Messing around, and he, I, was, I was already had gotten to the other side, and I was drying out. I remember I'm sitting there just with my shirt on, the backpack was off, and I had my boots on. And they said, "What got loose?" And he's 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 going down the river. He's drowning. I look over, I don't see him, but I jumped in. After him. I had taken a, a life-saving course in college, just as an extra credit. Okay. <laughs> You wonder how things work out. So I was confident that uh, that was a strong service. So I was confident I'd be okay. So I swam out to there and uh, I'd go with my hands up like this. You know, where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's over there. So I'd swim over there. And, where is he? Where is he? Pretty soon, this little brown shoulder appears on the top of this brown churning water. I mean, I just luck. Yeah. So I did the under arm. We did the cross chest carry and a kick. I got back to the shoreline. I was wore out. 
by oh, the time yeah. I got back to yeah. shore and I was yelling at the guy, I said, come help me, I can't, you know, I'm tired. So I got him up on shore and I put him uh, face down, downhill, and it's just, they didn't have mouth to mouth at that time, it was, you know, when he put his arms up like that, his face is clear as stroke for any obstructions, and I'm working on his back of his back and pushing him like that. Well, he pretty spits up a bunch of water comes to, because he was out. Wow. I don't, I don't, he wasn't dead, yeah. I guess, but he was unconscious because he wasn't fighting me or anything on the way back. So, so that was my good day. <laughs> that's a good day. Saves yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah, that's a good day. Yeah. Uh, specialist Grant. <clears throat> Grant. Grant. Did you ever have um, I could contact never with find him again? Yeah. I wanted to tell him what a miracle that was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's and grateful. I found him. He wasn't grateful. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> The other guys gave him hell because he didn't thank me. Mm. So he begrudgingly came back and thanked me, you know. I don't know why I'm thanking a white man. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of... The tension. <laughs> you edit that out or not, but yeah. that was the times. Yeah, the tension. So yeah. I said, okay, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. Never spoke again. Wow. And I can't find him anywhere like if he died or if he was still there. I keep looking up Grant. That's all I did. I didn't know his first name. I figured and he was... Spec four or corporal, you know. David hasn't run time, across him. I, I don't know. hasn't run across him. Though. Yeah, oh. can't seem to find him. But uh, be nice if he came to a reunion. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if he may have made it to the hill because of that April fifteenth, when the captain was chewing me out. <laughs> Here, my mom and dad had written their congressman that they didn't think we were getting good medical care. Yeah. It's something you don't do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought my life was ruined because he chewed me up and down. Like I said, Perez didn't stand up for me with uh, any uh, me jumping the drownings, walking point, the Rivera. I was always doing what I was told, walking point all the time. I was a good soldier, I thought. Anyway, a little angry at Rivera. I mean, at uh, Perez for that. But. Not speaking of. Yeah. So they said, get your shit. <laughs> Get out to the chopper pad. Don't even say goodbye to your buddies. I just want you out of this unit. You're going to Alpha Company on a resupply chopper. So that's how I got to Alpha Company. That's kind of harsh. Yeah. 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 Kind of harsh, yeah. Did you see any of your Charlie Company brothers for the remainder of the tour at no. all? No. Okay. No. I wrote Bandelier because he was my best friend and told him what happened in a letter. And that's how he knew what, okay. what happened. He, he said he had talked to. Uh, uh, Joel Troutman took over for Duggar at that point. He was the, the platoon leader. Mm -hmm. He said, nope, he was a troublemaker. Wes a troublemaker. He's out of here. You don't need to know why. Wow. So he was kind of angry at Troutman for a while for that. But I explained all the letter, and then he knew. You know, somehow we were able to send letters to each other, other people. Yeah, each <laughs> you other. Know, I don't know if it went all the way to San Francisco and back or not. But, <laughs> you know. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he eventually found out. He told me later. But, uh, yeah. So I'm in an, I'm in an Alpha company then. Uh, and what, that was again. That was uh, March or April. 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 Okay. Somewhere April, April 15th. I'm calling okay. it. Uh, yeah, so it's Alpha. Co well, I, was, uh, I got there, resupplied, so carried cases of sea rations and ammo and stuff like that. So I had my 100 pound, 90 pound pack on my back. It was a lower LZ. We'd gone up this trail to the top where they were and had an NDP up there. So we had to carry that all the way up. Well, I couldn't carry that in my pack all the way up. So I put it down for, this is my thought, I put it down for a minute. I'll go up, drop my pack, come back and get it. Well, when I got up there without a case of sea on my shoulder, it had to be Jobert, Sergeant Jobert. He was a push-up freak. <laughs> had to be him. It's easy one to get, maybe give, get out and give him 20 push-ups because I didn't have a case of sea rash on my back. It's not with a pack on my back, so, so I knew right then some word had spread that I'm a troublemaker, <laughs> thinking it's going to follow me through this. You know, i got to basically start over, yeah. prove myself, and uh, so anyway. <laughs> he, no, he was a Korean War vet, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Him yeah. and, uh, you know, Blackjack. Yep. Both fought Korea. Yep. So then, so you got, did you go back down and get the sea rations? It had already, somebody had already grabbed it, okay. carried it back out. Okay. I was busy doing push-ups. Yeah. 
I don't remember what happened after that, but we joined them and, you know, going on patrols and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, we must have been in the Exxon gone in because we were always in you know, some kind of firefights all the time after I got to Alpha Company. Yeah. Charlie kept me, we'd hear about Alpha Company. We had you know, almost like a Boy Scout. <laughs> Camp, you know, hiking and camping, there's not much contact at all. We'd always hear about Alpha Company getting in trouble or, or if they were looking for trouble, but they were always in some kind of scurvy. So when he sent me to Alpha Company, I thought, okay, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to survive it. Yeah. yeah, but they must have gone on some patrols. I knew my birthday was April 24th, and uh, 25th, I have a picture of me on the, the that's where I'm standing at a naval yard or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I guess, the, you know, having good Navy food, enjoying that. And then I guess it was the 26th or something, then we, we flew out, you know, got to, what was that? What fire base was that, Blaze, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. There were so many helicopters my entire life. I thought there was a thousand of them. I guess there was 88 or 90, but all Hueys coming in to pick up guys. And you'd load up and I'd be on somewhere in the middle, flying. And I could see this four or five that way, four or five this way, as far as the eye could see in front and in back. It was just like a swarm wow. <laughs> going like this into the Ashaw Valley. I'm feeling pretty confident with all those soldiers. Surely you'll be all right. And then, First, we happened to land on a man. <laughs> airborne wasn't uh, airborne yet. Yeah, down, down the guy or I, something. I don't know, yeah. but I, I was. I think I was on that chopper that's on the front of the crouching beast. Is with the, that one or the next one? Because the next one was shot down. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, lived through that. And, kind of a blur. I know every seemed like all the time we were in uh, firefights in the Asia. Just a bad place yeah. <laughs> to be. Yeah. Yeah. I learned how uh, important a yellow smoke grenade is. You think that's you know, maybe a nice little thing that you're supposed to have on your pack. Okay, I'll carry it. Well, we were surrounded one day. Still thick jungle. It wasn't really mountain that I remember, but it was maybe flatter. But it was real thick jungle. We were surrounded, getting beaten to death, and uh, they call it a uh, for air support and a uh, loach, that's the smaller like sports car of the, <laughs> the helicopters came in. So he had a minigun mounted on the side, like over here, not underneath, but on the side. And he would go down. It wasn't as far from here to the door. He was sweeping back and forth with the minigun, tearing up the side. Well, what you needed to do, they said, everybody pop their yellow spokes. We're looking to fire up everything but yellow. So, if you had had a yellow smoke grenade, uh, good luck. I, you know, I had one. I popped it, so I was safe. But that, that kind of stopped that. Wow. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. And that was still on. Uh, I'd probably not pronounce. Still the before name, the hill. Okay, so still oh, yeah. what, what became the, the hill. hill became airborne. That that area. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, they eventually we do excursions. and somehow they got airborne, turned into a fire base. Can't be on top of airborne. Uh, I don't remember staying the night or not, but I know we hit the trail down from airborne. We were supposed to go down and hit an air base of some kind. That's what trickled down to me. Nobody. Uh, this had to be May 1st or 2nd. Uh, I just found out the other day from Bandelier, he looked it up and it was May 2nd and 3rd that the two point man were killed yeah. in Alpha Company. Yeah. So yeah. you might have missed one or two on your. Okay. thing last night. <laughs> I don't know, very I don't know who they yeah. were, but yeah. save to say I don't know their name. May 2nd, guys killed. You know, you stop what you're doing, fire up the front, somebody chases them, you try to call in for artillery maybe. It seemed like it kills four or five hours, just one shot, you know, from a trail watcher. Well then, uh, next day comes, they proceed down the trail a little further, point man gets killed, another one gets killed. Same bigger role. A lot of ammo being fired up. West, you and some other guy, another guy, go up, back up to Airborne. I don't know how long, how far this is at that, this point. Maybe it's a mile back up to the top. So I'm thinking I'm being picked on again. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> when West was a popular name. Uh, West duty. So we went back up to Airborne. 
and he got a case of uh, ammo and uh, carried it back on. They asked if he wanted to stay and have money. No, we don't have time. We need to get back down, you know. And uh, we were headed back down the trail. I remember then they got hit with a barrage of mortar fire. I, think I heard later there was over 300 rounds of mortar wow. fire hit, uh, hit the fire base up there. Uh, okay. We were on right down the ball. trail. Uh -huh. I get down there, we're spreading out the ammo. West, you're on point in the morning. So, I think I must have had a long night. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't bet. know. I bet. Yeah. But uh, Harkins, Captain Harkins was the captain. He uh, changed it up. We're going to do a recon by fire instead of walking the stupid point man down the lane like that. So he saved me. <laughs> that much. Yeah. You know, we kind of get online as best you can one little trail and jungle each way, so we fired up every other step and we fired up the front just uh, I guess you didn't want to wondering if there was anybody event. there or not. So I guess we eventually got down toward the bottom. Some rifts off here and there with different platoons. And, uh, I guess you didn't want to lose another point, man. So. No. Yeah. yeah. So then, the, so that was, I think, the second and third? Second and third, third, I heard, and yeah. And then you guys May second and third, patrolled yeah. a little bit longer seven more days till we got to, to the hill. Okay. Did yeah. you all go back to uh, Camp Evans between that or just straight, no, straight in? Still out in the field. Yeah. Uh, I was in a squad that uh, came upon a, a village, some kind of small encampment. And it had been there a long time. There was hooches with bunkers underneath them. There was a trail going out. There was like five hooches on the side. The end of the and they were in bunkers and you go down you just find some cashews some some rice maybe some ammo not much they didn't like abandoned it I guess or, or we were coming but the other end was an ingenious kitchen that they had built it was little stoves built into the side of a, a hill up hmm. like that where they were baking three or four of those water was still trickling down from cut bamboo shoots coming down the mountainside from a stream up above it was still running. <laughs> when you and say the, cut the bamboo chimneys shoot. from the chi the, the ovens were uh, falling underneath the leaves, and so it would not be one smoke stack. Oh. It would kind of filter up okay. from others. So I so thought what, that was awful ingenious. When you say the bamboo shoots, did they hollow them out? Yeah. Okay. Kind of like it was like half half okay. uh, bamboo, like they just open oh, on the top. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. First hooch I went in due to clear. You got in your looking like you see them doing in the village. I go in there and I look up and there's this uh, python in the rafters. I think they call it a python, but it had to be 15 feet long. Ooh, yeah. It was like this, like this, like this, and his head was hanging down sort of toward the entrance. And I'd have shot him, but you just don't fire your weapon unless you have a really, really good reason. <laughs> You'd get in trouble for yeah, that. So yeah, I didn't shoot him. But I backed out <laughs> carefully. I said, "This one's clean. <laughs> Don't need to go in there." I probably told him what was in there. But I didn't see anything in the bunker down below, or so it's all right. So that was my uh, memory. That kind of had to be eerie, though, walking into these areas that you know were still pretty yeah. fresh. You know, yeah. bunkers that were still pretty fresh. You're in somebody else's country. Yeah. Or you're downtown. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That's like, uh, well. There's more than one Ho Chi Minh trail, you know, there was all the trails that basically Chi Minh Lay was in. And so I said I want to point on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, but it was a, one that was particular, was very wide, it was like five from maybe ten feet wide, well traveled, hard packed dirt. Every so often you'd see a picnic bench on the side. <laughs> the picnic bench. And telegraph poles. Really? Wires still going, so okay. We're in somebody else's territory. They probably know we're coming. I'm sure they know we're coming ahead. Couldn't have missed those helicopters coming in. So, yeah. We were on Alpha Company uh, at the hills. And we were like on the western side, the Laotian border side is what we were told. Mm -hmm. To where we, then we would have sawed up the western slope and up those ridge lines. It was very, not just a smooth thing. Of course, when we got there, it was solid jungle, just like everything else. It just seemed like a regular trails. We would go up and patrol up and, you know, penetrate that. It wasn't 
we knew that uh, there was a regiment there or anything and we were going to plan that out. Honeycutt already determined he wanted us to top of the hill by that day. Yeah. That's what I heard <laughs> later. Uh, so, you probably know the whole story about that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, I think Alpha the company said we only assaulted, that's, I only remember three times, they said we assaulted three times. Uh, we camped down below. Did, did you know what was going on with any of the other companies or platoons? You just knew what was going no. on right in front of you? Okay. No, just yeah. knew our little area. One evening, uh, well, I, I dug my own bunker, just like there's a saddle, there's the, maybe the river, Play Ocean Border River down here. Kind of up a hill, kind of a saddle we were in that we kind of camped in at the bottom of Hamburger Hill. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of spread out along there. I dug my hole on that side and pretty deep into the jungle, <laughs> just in case. Uh, so I definitely had a hole to go to. But I remember one night, for some reason, that we left a couple of guys, we left our area, we went up the trail to our left. And there was some Bravo companies guy up there. They was kind of sitting around a little circle. It had to be. Yeah, it was dark. Maybe it was moonlight because nobody would have had a light or a campfire. But uh, they're sitting around the circle and they're passed around a canteen. You know? Well, okay, whatever. It was full of whiskey. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a. Remember, maybe it was a bottle. But somebody told me later, no, somebody had put filled her canteen with whiskey. So we were, you know, like the, the old soldier. You see them drinking a bottle of whiskey passed it to the left. So I took a sip and went back down. But uh, I remember the only assaults I remember was one, uh, it's a still jungle. There had already been some bombings to clear out some areas, bomb craters here and there, you know. Uh, one assault we were going up, there's a guy ahead of me, there's somebody over here. They kind of went around the bomb crater. There's a guy standing, I remember, on the top of the bomb crater, up a little bit high. There's a guy on top of the bomb crater. We're here a little high, somebody behind me, and two of us kind of went into the bomb crater. And uh, I don't know if it was my fault or not. <laughs> you know, get down. They were standing up straight, you know, they'd get down. Pretty soon, machine gun fire, all four of them were shot. If they all died or not, I guess not, because there weren't that many killed in Alpha Company, so they must have just been wounded. Sky and me were looking at each other, and our helmets are touching. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I don't remember after that. Okay. I'm sure we, you know, I remember the assaults. I don't remember taking bodies, taking them back down. We had to. I'm sure we did. Uh, another one. I was with uh, was a machine assistant machine gunner for Johnny Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huge guy. I mean, I just, you know, could have carried a tank on his shoulders if he wanted to. Just a big guy. I was an uh, assistant machine gunner for him on one of the assaults. Uh, we're fired up the front, and uh, pretty soon his gun fails, overheated or melted, I don't know what it was. So he, uh, he I'm on my back feeding him like this, and he's machine gun here feeding him from that side of the gun. Uh, no air protection. Yeah. That's, why <laughs> that's kind death. of important. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, stop. We got to put our hearing plugs yeah. in. That, you know, nothing like that happened. I don't even remember having earplugs, yeah. but because you had to be, listen for any sound, all of a sudden you got a firefight and machine guns and bombs going off. So uh, that, and, uh, so he went back down, and I stayed there because I had the M16. And I was still uh, still assaulting and fighting. Uh, I'll say in three, but the, so during this one, it must have been where we're going up the hill. Got a left me gets hit with an RPG. The chest. The chest. Yeah. All I remember is his helmet. I'm spinning at my feet. Yeah. Full of blood. No. Yeah. Don't remember after that. I yeah. just kind of turned off my brain at that point or something. And the next time I'm going up, the next time I just swore I was by myself. I'm sure I wasn't, but it just. Maybe it felt that way or something. But I was going up a ridge line along the left edge, still on the western slope, maybe the farthest edge of that way. And uh, halfway up, oh, I'm sorry. During one of the assaults, Jackson was with, I was with Jackson, and he got to, the, he got fed up and just 
stood up and ran up and uh, shooting up bunkers and got to the top. That was the final day, the final assault? No, no. it was somewhere okay. in the middle. Okay. It was before it started raining. And so uh, I, I had to go with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was up there and I remember he got to the top and uh, a white uh, smoke round hits from artillery right behind him. So he was start he was walking back, he was walking through the smoke like going like this. And uh, Bresnahan realized that's the first round of an artillery barrage. So he calls on the radio right away to say, stop, don't, don't do the barrage like a men in top. So he saved our lives there. And, uh, but, and, and then another one, I was assaulting up the left edge of a, of a really sharp ridge line. Went straight down to the left, maybe a little bit bumpy off to the right. Uh, pretty much low crawling up. <laughs> This Cobra attack helicopter comes right over my head. I'm going this way, and he's coming like this. He's over my head, he dips down like this. And he starts firing up, and I look to my left, and there's 40 or 50 NVA soldiers running out of a tunnel toward Laos. He, you know, basically kills all of them. He had, I didn't know you could fire all your weapons at the same time. He yeah. had the, Grenade launcher, the minigun, and rockets all fired at the same time, right over my head. <laughs> Had they seen you? No, did I they know you were there? Don't know. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was another thing you wondered about. At that point, we were well aware of friendly fire. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, trigger happy. I call them trigger happy. I'm sure they're doing the best they could, but and it's you know the jungle was thick and stuff like that. They didn't know always where we were. Right. Figured the enemy was on top and we weren't, but half the time we were halfway up, you know. So anyway, I and for a long time I thought that was Bravo Company. <laughs> yeah. So because I mean, they were to our left, I thought they were maybe assaulting up that way, but they okay. I guess they weren't. So okay. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 So final day, this is the eleventh. 11th hour, the 11th day, <laughs> I'm assuming, uh, going up. We always left our packs at the bottom. You could carry your pack and have at the same time as all the hills and get our water bottles and well, all the ammo we could carry at our six feet and go up. And uh, so, final day, I didn't know it was final day, of course. Right. Uh, and I, I must have been down there at the bottom hesitating, thinking I really don't want to. <laughs> go up this hill. Somebody behind me says, get your ass up that hill. I don't remember to this day who it was. <laughs> so I started going forward. I'm, I'm firing up the front, uh, dropping magazines, putting new magazines, firing up the front. My weapon was so hot, all I could touch was the new magazine. I mean, I had to hold on to the grip and the trigger, but I had basically hold on to the magazine because the grip and the barrel was red hot. Got to the top. I. I I can't believe I didn't shoot anybody in front of me. I, I didn't, but I, you know, maybe I was all alone <laughs> going the last guy up. I don't know how that worked, but I got to the top. I remember sitting there on the edge at the top, one magazine left, all, all my ammo, looking back down the hill. Here comes Perez, he's policing up magazines, and hands me two. <laughs> From Charlie Company. <laughs> He was on, I guess he was on R&R &R at the time, and he canceled his R&R &R and came back Wow. to be in the battle. Wow. Yeah. Is he uh, still alive? Do you know? No. No, okay. Uh, three or four or five years ago. He came to a couple reunions, and, uh, you know, and he died. He was okay. lived in Guam, that's all I know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure we did not spend the night then on the hill. I, it doesn't make sense to me that it would, I don't know. <laughs> they were good counterattacks. I don't know. Anyway, they flew us out, and uh, I remember being at Eagle Beach for a couple of days, relaxing in the sun. That's those pictures I showed you yeah. of the beach and stuff, relaxing. They said we had steaks for dinner. I can't remember all that. So they put us kind of on light duty because we were still diminished in size. Uh, I guess. Charlie Company had 75% casualties. I think they said we had 30. I forget what Bravo and Delta had, similar. 
So you know, applicant may have the least yeah. of them. <laughs> rough, rough all the Just way luck, I guess, yeah. or the right side of the hill. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was our experience or not, but <laughs> so, could be. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. it was on light duty. We were on uh, guard the Anlo Bridge, Heard somewhere near Way. Yeah, I'm thinking it was south of Way because uh, uh, east of Way. Um, yeah, it was north north west of. Way, I guess I could show it to you on the. On the thing I would remember is that uh, we're there for a few days. We're, we're going through buses, looking for weapons and enemy, you know, and let them buy us and go to the next bus. And then we'd stay in these little hooches. Uh, who built the hooches? Or just taking over something that was there? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> pretty soon, I'm getting this really terrible fever and can't get up and call the medic in. I guess I got a hundred and five temperature. So I had malaria. After all that, they yeah. convinced the medic to, you know, for help. <laughs> he helped me put me in a, I was on the back of a Jeep and we drove through Way. I remember you see some of these temples and the around I don't know if you went around a roundabout or something and then on and I I'm guessing I ended up at Evans. I don't know, but I was in an army tent, the grass floor on a cot with uh, alcohol rags on my chest and a fan hmm. to cool me down. Hmm. And uh, that for a little while, and then they realized it wasn't enough, so they shipped me off to an Air Force barracks hospital someplace. Not possible. No, that's when they sent me to Cameron Bay. Okay, okay. Air Force hospital in Cameron Bay. I'm in a uh, nice barracks, I'm in a you know, a hospital bed with clean sheets, and they had a uh, uh, some kind of a refrigerated suit around me. It was light green. It had tubes going all around me like that. Keeping you cool. Keeping yeah. me cold. Yeah, yeah, I'm shivering. I remember that shivering because it was so cold. Uh, trying to keep my temperature down, but I was also watching John Wayne movies at the same time. On the a little treat, <laughs> yeah. It helped a little distraction from you thinking about your cold. So yeah. uh, I remember that. That was great. And they started uh, treating me with quinine, I guess, to get rid of the uh, malaria. Turns out I'm allergic to quinine. Oh my! They told me they did. They tripled everything overseas because of the bacteria diseases. Yeah, but they would triple dosages. So maybe that was it. But. My head swole up, my ears swole up, my eyes shut, and my throat started closing up. Remember them rushing me out on my, on my bed, I guess, out of the door, down a covered wooden walkway, down another wooden walkway into another building, which must have been surgery. And before any painkillers, they started digging the flesh out of my throat with this like angled tool that had like three teeth on it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember crying on the all the way back to my bed. Yeah. I know what they must have gave me a shot eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> well, they had to act quickly because I was choking. Okay, so we're trying to. Get I couldn't okay. breathe. Yeah. I was choking to death. So. After so then all they lanced that. my my jaw to draining draining my parotid gland. They called it from here all the way down my chin like that. And they put it down, it was, they told me it was a plastic surgeon from California that performed the surgery. <laughs> so he tried not to deface my, make, you know, make me look ugly. So it was, I had a line that was kind of numb for years. It just went down that end. But they, they left it open to keep it cleaned out, these long wooden Q-tips and just go up and down. And <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. So I couldn't eat drink anything, so I was on fluids. I uh, went down to about 130 some pounds. What did you weigh? All the you... muscles in my leg were gone. I, my kneecaps were the biggest things on my legs. What did you weigh when you got to Vietnam? Probably like 165 okay. or something, maybe something like that. Pretty good shape, you know, from all the training. Yeah. You know, I, you know, one picture I was doing a one arm push up for the family. <laughs> But right around in there, I think, maybe 170 pounds. Yeah, I lost all that weight. Muscle and fat and everything yeah. I was lost. Finally, the nurses, uh, I was able to 
take food, so they were remember feeding me milkshakes, chocolate milkshakes, and got me going. I was able to stand up and I was able to walk around. I uh, got a, another uniform that fit me. <laughs> got a haircut. Uh, another base in there. They saw me walking around. Okay, you're back in the field. Do you remember I, how I weigh long? about the same as my pack now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how long you were in different hospitals, or how long that? I'll take it a month. Okay. Uh, the battle was over the twentieth. We were guarding the Enlo Bridge for a few days. Uh, put me at the end of May. And then, so somewhere in June, and then somewhere in like July first or really the end of June, because uh, Brian Walsh. He'd been trying to get a hold of me for years. I guess I was his you know, team leader <laughs> on uh, Cannon, Firebase Cannon, and then went to Rendezvous, which mm -hmm. is right on the edge of the a mm -hmm. But he remembers me. I didn't remember anybody, or I even take pictures after I got back out oh. in the field. Because so, uh, light duty, it wasn't really helping much. We went on a few patrols around the perimeters a few times, I remember no long-term backpacking through the jungle looking for enemy search and destroy but, but you remember being on Cannon followed by Ron Bebu? Yeah, okay. uh, it was Cannon that I was assigned to a uh, explosive expert, blowing trees. Learned all about demolition and dead cord and C4 and blasting caps and, and all that. So one day, we're on patrol past this unexploded 500-pound bomb on the edge of the trail. West, you <laughs> and two other guys go up and detonate that bomb. Like I'm a, like I'm a bomb expert. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know why the lieutenant that was teaching me didn't go. Anyway, I thought, well, okay, I, I took a few sticks of C4 and some blasting caps and some uh, regular cord that you light. It wasn't electronically charged, so there's regular plastic caps. I don't know how many feet of, like a foot per minute did they burn, so I, three or four feet. <laughs> to give us time to get out of there. Yeah. So I lit it, we hightailed it back toward our, you know, the fire base that we were on. Brian remembers the, you know, the, the charge going off, but then I was successful what I did. The C4 blew up. But the 500 pound bomb did not. Did not. <laughs> and we didn't feel like going back and checking or doing it again. I mean, we, you got this bomb pretty much exposed. You see the head, it's like this big around. It's from here to I mean, not quite that wall. So, Good size. I'm guessing 500 pound. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I put, where do I, I put it toward the head, I guess. <laughs> put the explosive around the head. That was my thought process, not being an expert. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it was my job, so. And I thought all these years, only I knew about that or remembered it. And here, Brian, he was with me on that particular little uh, little jaunt. And he remembers yeah. also, yeah. I just met him two years ago in San Antonio. Oh, really? He tried to get a hold of me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we met. You, you tell me these stories, I think, you were there, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Isn't that crazy? You know, yeah. yeah. I thought maybe you had made contact with him a while back now. I recently. don't remember people after I got back okay. out in the field. Okay. I don't know why it's very insensitive of me not to remember well, people's names I was with. No, it's of course, I remember Charlie right? Companies because I was with them six and a half months. Yeah. So they got to Alpha, we were in battle all the time. Yeah. I knew a few people's names that was in our squad and was close to, but that was it for so, knowing quick, people. Quick question on you know your hospital and stay. Did your family know what was going on? I'm sure they were notified you were in the hospital. Or? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. And I, I had a IV in my arm, and I remember not writing them. Yeah. So they still found out eventually that I was. I remember as soon as we got off the hill, they told us to write home to your families, tell them you're okay. Well, yeah, so, they're seeing all that all on the so news. So I don't know how yeah. fast the mail was. A week. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Why did they let us call home? There's a bar station, you know, at yeah. Camp Evans, we could have called them. Anyway. Well, they're watching all this on the news. Yeah, oh, God, yes. Yeah. They're watching it on the news, yeah. 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 Well, okay, my family so uh, saw it on the news. They live in Akron, 
So the stations that happened were Cleveland stations. So they drove up to Cleveland and the CBS had come out to Hamburger Hill one day. I remember hearing the cameras were there and some kind of gesture they bought us, they brought ice cream out. <laughs> You know, the little cups like yeah, that, it, yeah. it was already milk by that yeah. time, but it was a gesture, I guess. I don't remember them filming, they didn't film any battles or anything, it was just somewhere in the wall, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the hard part of that battle was the, when the rain came, the far, you know, the 18th maybe, something like that. By well, that time, all the jungle's gone. Yeah. It's a muddy, it's a dirt hill full of potholes from the bomb craters all over the place. Sticks here, on, you know, beat up, chewed up sticks here and there that were trees and branches where we're grabbing. It's a muddy, you know, muddy slide, very slick mud, dirt. You're trying to get up, you see, you grab a twig, and you're trying to get up and looking for enemy at the same time and shooting. Yeah. And, and uh, it's something like that one scene in uh, the movie. Hamburger Hill. That's the only one we agree was pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 The rest of it was similar, but not. Yeah. Uh, that oh. it, uh, somewhere early August, maybe the 10th of August or something like that, on patrol. There were usual patrols around the fire base. Must have been rendezvous at that point, because this was toward the end. Uh, I'm on point, walking kind of a little trail or flat area that you can walk around the, around the perimeter. And uh, being on point, you're super alert to anything out of the ordinary. Well, I see this tiny little green cloth packet, about that big. It's like sewed around, it's like feathered edge, like a you know, jagged edge, mm -hmm. sewed, something hard in the middle. Uh, I'm still looking, so I put it down in my, you know, those parachute pockets on the side. I put it down in there and just kind of forgot about it. I think I was, I think I was going to ask somebody about it later. I didn't. And one day we're sitting having lunch inside the bunker and my leg must have hit the, the, hit the metal edge of my rucksack and exploded on my leg. Holy moly. I heard, all I heard at the point was a puff and smoke came out. Looked at it. I tore my pants. <laughs> well, I pulled my pants apart and got a hole in my leg that big around. The, 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 the explosion had already blackened the veins and stopped the bleeding from happening. So, Cauterize it? Yeah, yeah cauterize it already. Yeah. So I had to convince the medic to come over. I had a problem. You know, but okay. How <laughs> bad could it be? All right, Wes. <laughs> I showed it to him. So they, I called choppers out, I got to pop my yellow smokes and they landed, picked me up, took me to a mass unit. I remember them asking me if this was a uh, hostile action. I had to say no, <laughs> it wasn't. So what, what was it that you picked up? That's what I keep trying to find out. It was some kind of uh, explosive that goes around mortars or, or artillery rounds. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I just talked to an artillery guy. He thinks it's something they used to put on top of the mortars for extra explosives when it hit their point, but yeah, it exploded. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. surprise. Yeah. yeah, I knew I wasn't stupid enough to put plastic caps in my pocket. We always kept those in containers, you know, nice uh, foam containers and stuff like that. So I knew I would, that couldn't have been it. I just kept reflecting back when I put that thing in my pocket and that's where it exploded when I, at that lower corner, is like right here. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, those million dollar wounds. But, yeah. Uh, so the family heard I had a leg wound. That's all they heard. And uh, got back to, uh, uh, they said, it's been Da Nang. They sent me to Da Nang for some reason. They sewed me up some more. They put, uh, oh, the mass unit, they just put like three staples closing up that hole. Like when you're in one in the middle, so it was like a just an ugly looking <laughs> suture. You didn't have the nice, California. I nice sewed suture. Yeah, the, the plastic, plastic surgeon, surgeon wasn't was not there. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to the Nang, they put me there, and they, then they sent me to Japan. And they said, if you go to Japan, you're not going back. You're going to the States. So I went home after that. So Normally that kind of wound, and that early, and maybe a different year, earlier year, 
they would have sent me back. Yeah. But because they were trying to cut down on the amount of troops in there, and of course the the newspapers about Hamburger Hill and all that that was going on, it just yeah, got that, people out of country, yeah. and so then I went home. So you got wounded roughly around the 10th of August. August. Okay, so you were pretty close. You were you were becoming a short timer in Vietnam. Officially, had 10 months and 10 days in country. Yeah. So they might have counted my time in Japan. Okay. Because I got home on my wife's birthday on August 18th. Okay. Well, <laughs> I bet she was happy about that. Yeah. I flew on a hospital jet, uh, facing backwards, or there was either beds or chairs facing backwards on this hospital jet, the Air Force hospital jet. We landed, I think, you know, I just found out like a few years ago, we landed near Pima in Arizona, okay. south of Phoenix. Okay. There's a big graveyard there. I remember when we were either coming in or sitting there waiting for refueling, all I could see was B-52 bombers as far as the eye could see. I mean, it was the graveyard, they weren't lined up for attack. Right. They were just bunched all in against each other. Okay. Then we flew off and landed in Dayton at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And, yeah. Did you stay in the hospital back in the States for a little while? No. Or? Okay, so you were you I were was there maybe a day, my family came down and picked me up and I went home. Okay. I was in blue pajamas from Da Nang to Japan to, to, to home. And the next day they had my full uniform for me, a full khaki uniform with my name and medals and a hat with the, with the Rakasan thing on it. And it fit me. Who was in charge of that? That was just, I thought that was another little thing that they just don't understand. Who's doing her job? Yeah, you know? all of a sudden somebody, somebody yeah, has all it of a sudden ready. I got a uniform I went home with. Yeah. No. So when they, when they, you're wounded and they pulled you out, you didn't even get to say goodbye to anybody at that point either. I might have said goodbye, Brian yeah. Walsh. <laughs> Off to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, knew I was getting out of there and flying uh, to a medical facility and I thought I'd probably come and come back. I didn't know. I, didn't, I don't think I took my. Pretty sure I didn't take my backpack with me. But yeah, my backpack had, uh, I always kept a tape recorder. We were sending tapes back and forth yeah. to home. You know, so I could hear their voices. She sent me one, and I'd hear her talking, and I basically didn't have a lot of them, so I'd write over that one, send it back. back. So I have a few left. That's uh, pretty, save those. Yeah. 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 Save those. Yeah. Um, I had a great question, but I. I can't remember what it was. Um, and you, oh, you said you recorded some of the guys you were with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One day I had a, I, we had a stand down, we get showers and change of clothes, and I interviewed a few people to say, "What's your name?" You know, and they're Juan Alfredo Rivera, and he just up and beat. You know, this had to be like January, December, January, like that. Yeah. Some other people get showers. Give me a hard time with the recorder, not really something I could. <laughs> it's a family year, I just a couple times. But anyway, that's what I did that. One time I, I recorded a typical night on a, on a fire base, on the bunker. Wow. And during, this is when I was in Charlie Company. And uh, no action, just uh, uh, telephones. It went to the different different bunkers. We were bunker number six or seven, I don't know. Uh, I think we see movement out front. You see anything down there? Negative. <laughs> That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Perez came down. I remember him coming down the trail. I'm watching the whole way with my rifle on him. And I said, "Halt! Who goes there?" And he gets all the way up and says, "You were you're sleeping." He just. <laughs> no, I was. I watched you walk all the way down there. Did you want me to shoot you or something? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stuff like that. So I recorded all that. Uh, the, the telephone calls, and listening about what was going to happen. Bandler says, man, I want to pop a flare. I want to see what's going on. He'd, he'd been in country a lot longer than I have. He was kind of a guy I was learning from. I want to pop this flare, man. You know, there's these silver flares that you could take apart. And you'd pop them, pop them yeah. like that and go up. Do you still have that tape? Yes, yeah. I have that one too. You got it. <laughs> we gotta get those. We gotta get those digitized. Uh, it turned off when we started doing a bad minute. 
Yeah. Uh, it was you could it was so quiet you could kind of hear the motor of the tape recorder going. <laughs> we got to get those digitized. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be really cool to to listen to that. I'd have to review it because on the other side would be a romantic yeah. letter. Home, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what what do you recall about going home? I mean, what was getting to your own home, your own bed? I mean, it had to be like walking into a foreign yeah. world at some at some level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, my family welcomed me home. Got the banners out, yeah. stuff like that. They would have a film of it, a little eight millimeter film. <laughs> I'll be coming home. Skinny, still skinny, just like that for my arms, and like this. And in uniform, just like a little kid <laughs> in my uniform. But uh, glad to be home. Uh, still, really didn't. Uh, I think a couple of neighbors came down and walked me home, but uh, didn't really tell anybody about it. You wonder if you're still in that thing of uh, being a baby killer. I didn't tell anybody you a soldier fought in Vietnam. You just didn't didn't let anybody know about it. I went back to I had a just a year and a half of college and went back to school back with you to uh, try to finish up with a degree, and it just didn't uh, wasn't as important, I guess. Also, uh, some Vietnamese were there getting full scholarships, hmm. uh, getting the GI Bill. Maybe I got my books paid for in that class or two. So that yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe rubbed me wrong. I don't yeah. know. Not that I hated them. I never went over there with hate or wanted to kill anybody or anything. So anyway. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, understandable. So um, did you? Uh, Get any treatment? Like I mean, I know in those first decade or more, you didn't weren't really, exist. Yeah, Their PTSD wasn't even a, a word. Right, right. Maybe shell shocked was a word. I think of the Civil War. It was called uh, uh, something about reflecting back in time. I forget what that word was. Anyway, but shell shocked or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I wasn't wounded. But, you know. Accident, but wasn't willing to do it. I felt I was fine, so yeah. I wasn't going to go to the VA and be a crybaby and complain about something. I, don't right. know, I didn't, didn't realize I, I probably had hearing loss. <laughs> well, feeding the machine gun that one day, uh, I just heard this yeah. for two days. Yeah, couldn't hear a thing. I remember going down the trail. Sergeant, sergeant down there directing us which way to go. I said, I can't hear anything. <laughs> you know, so I, but can't you know, I, I don't remember the, the night, but you're, you're deaf and you're a night on guard at night. So that's all you really had was your hearing. You couldn't see anything in the dark. Right. In the jungle, it was just so thick. You'd almost touch your eyelids to see if those, your eyelids were open. But, yeah. yeah, so a couple of days of that. But then it went away. Then, like 10, 15 years later, I felt ringing <laughs> in my ears. Uh, yeah. So, what, when did you go to your first reunion? It was like 2008. Okay. So, good. Was that? Uh, I think it was Troutman got a hold of me, contacted me. So, good 30 years after? Yeah. 29, 30 years? Yeah, yeah. not even thinking about it. I started thinking. Not that I had symptoms, but I was real upset at the beginning of uh, Desert Storm and uh, those things. But here we go. Yeah, yeah. Set your boys into yeah to their deaths, and, yeah. you know, for no really good reason. So I think that's what it's trying to affect me that I was thinking about it. Yeah. That's the first reunion, first or second reunion. Johnny Jackson was there. Talk and he looks at me and says, You need to get to the VA, you got PTSD. There, the bump shrubs like this, yeah. talking yeah. about stuff. Yeah. So he's the one that uh, told me to check into it. Did you go? I did. I went, yeah. went home and found a uh, Williamson the County administrator for the VA or something like that. I thought, Oh, I met a guy at a McDonald's one morning. At McDonald's? <laughs> at a McDonald's one morning. It was kind of a group of guys sitting around. 
you know, one way I had on so I went over and introduced myself. He, he's going to direct me to this lady who then took care of me from then on. Nice. For uh, getting me, uh, you know, submitted uh, my things for help. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, so now out of the ten questions, I satisfied seven. <laughs> Not the one about suicide, but, you know, all the other yeah. things about uh, how you react to things. I still react to loud bangs. I know darn well it's coming, but up I, my leg, my knees buckle just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Can't yeah. handle Fourth of July yeah. very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard to explain to people that they've been in combat, but it's real. Yeah. The little rockets going off, the mortar sound, or the thump, you know, and they're waiting for the, <laughs> the bomb to yeah, explode. Yeah. 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 Did your wife understand it? I mean, I mean that had to be kind of Somewhat, hard for her to wrap I, her head around. I think I told her that I was told to tell the family, don't just come in and wake me up. Maybe touch my feet. You want to wake me yeah. up or something, don't come up to me. Yeah. So. Well, um, now that we've gone through the year, there's always things that you look back and think, man, I should have mentioned that. Is there any other people, events, that you want to mention um, or bring highlight to or any other experiences or anything you want to say at this point? Uh, all right. You know, the people I think I mentioned, everybody I remember, Mike Malone, was he my, he was my squad leader in Alpha Company. That's, oh, well, when I went to the very first reunion, it was, it was at a, like a Holiday Inn or something. A little apprehensive about going to the reunion. I was starting to believe the hype about crazy Vietnam veterans and uh, didn't want to be a bunch of gung ho crazy drug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you was, don't hang with those I almost, people. Yeah. Almost believed it, you know. Yeah. But uh, so I went. We went the last night of the of the day, of that reunion. At the end of the day, kind of walked in, sat at a table in the back, and uh, pretty soon I. The, uh, there's Bresnahan sitting there. I, we, I, didn't, I wasn't absolutely sure why I knew, but uh, we had been telling the same story during when we were digging in at one point down. This was before Hamburger Hill. Uh, we were digging in. Uh, it was 100 degrees out, 100% humidity. Still trying to keep our clothes on, steel pot on. I'm halfway through my turn of digging in a foxhole, we have taken turns. And I said, would you take my helmet? And I handed my helmet to him like this, or like this, I can't remember. And a rocket propeller grenade went right between us, right under my wow. armpit. You know, it felt like a long time for me to realize, RPG. <laughs> really? Here was Bresnahan that I was handing my helmet to. I think, well, what were you doing, the lieutenant up there? He said, I'd like to stay in the front with my men. So that was him. He knew that story like I did. It was him I handed my helmet to. Yeah. The rocket went through and exploded back into the rear somewhere where some other guys were. And then there must have been two guys shooting at us because right after that, another RPG hit a tree right behind Bresnahan. Blew him just from the concussion because he was a little bit, blew him into the foxhole on top of me. Then machine gun fire started coming in so heavy we couldn't get back out to our weapons because it was you know we did you don't have your weapon down in where the dirt where you're digging right. you leave it up side <laughs> never again but yeah. it's done. so that's how I, but we were telling the same story and so I've been going to reunions ever since yeah. just because it's a better therapy than talking to some stranger and meeting I'm in a group PTSD group we all. Extreme combat. It's either Navy, Marines, Air Force, Army, of course, and that we all meet in group therapy, which I was avoiding. I didn't want to be in a psychiatric group. Right. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I went to that. And pretty soon it was more friendship and yeah. uh, getting together and talk. We don't talk about combat or anything. It was more how you doing today? How you dealing with PTSD? Yeah. How's your family? So it was pretty lighthearted. Support, yeah. So, yeah. Important. So I've been Connection. going to it ever since. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, meeting uh, people at the reunion later that uh, experienced something I experienced that only I thought I remembered was when one of the choppers were shot down 
uh, from the hill. Hamburger Hill. And we were to go down and rescue the, the survivors if there were for those. So a few of us from Alpha Company, I guess there's, we were meeting somebody from Delta Company that was down there. I don't know how that was fired. I just remember getting down there, it was toward the end of the day, guys were coming out, their hands were burnt, so they were pouring water over their hands to help them relieve a little bit of pain. It started getting dark, so we kind of, you know, stopped where we were. And I remember I went up to the side of the trail with this uh, one pilot or door gunner, I'm not sure what his job was, and uh, talked about a few things. Uh, it was too dark to go back up, so we just stayed where we were. And uh, morning, he was dead. Hmm. I don't know, internal injuries or something. And no indication that I needed to do anything for him. Right. Just, to sleep, I guess. <laughs> in the morning, we're carrying up, and you know, ponchos, carrying up dead bodies and ponchos up a, in the middle of Hamburger Hill Battle, up a ravine, mm -hmm. up to, the, to get back up to the chopper pad. You know, so yeah, yeah. Another another fond memory. Uh, yeah, yeah, but like one of the guys in Alpha Company said, "Yeah, I was there with you." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't remember his name, but real soft-spoken guy that comes. He usually brings moonshine. Come the last time. <laughs> He's from North Carolina. Sounds like my kind of guy. You hardly hear him talk and say, What did you say? He just said, I can't remember his name now. Moonshine. We'll yeah. call him Moonshine. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let me turn this off. Okay. I'm wore out.